Hello world and welcome back or welcome if you are new here. It's that time again. May is just a couple of weeks away and being the person that I am trying to keep to my schedule, I have a new setup. Uh, this month I have decided to go for a honey and bees theme. This is one that I have seen a lot across the bullet journal community on YouTube and I've been interested in doing it for a long time and I finally decided to try my hand at it. I just swatched all of my watercolors as you can see in the back of my bullet journal and I wanted to I wanted to test them out and see how the Scribwell journal did against watercolors and it held up amazingly. You'll see a little bit later uh, there's no at bleeding there's no problems like it's a little wrinkled but I don't mind that personally I think probably uh, my experience thus far has been with the Lamome journal I don't think the paper is coated or if it is it's not very heavily coated whereas the paper in the Scriv Scrivwell journal is coated or more heavily coated so the paint doesn't soak in nearly as much you can see it's really easy to blend and it's not like bleeding through at all it was it was a joy I'm definitely gonna be painting in here again I don't know what I'm gonna do but I need to do something I did this little this little like dripping honey effect across the top and I did something kind of inspired by imprint the way that she tends to do her watercolors is a, a wash of sort of abstract colors and then a drawing or doodle on top of that. And that was the look I wanted to emulate for some little honeybees and honeycombs throughout the spread. The other reason that I wanted to do bees, there's a few reasons. I love bees. I just, I love bees. If, if I was gonna grow up and be like a crazy cat lady with scare quotes, I would be a crazy bee lady and just have honeybees and be an apiculturalist. That's that's what I would do. <laughs> um, yellow is one of my absolute. Yellow is my favorite color. Let's let's be real. Yellow is my favorite color. It's so bright and cheery, and that is exactly the mood that I want to carry into May and spring and looking ahead to summer. And lastly, the uh, social distancing, stay-at-home activity that my spouse and I have gotten back into is Minecraft. We, we started up, a friend of ours started up a new server for all of us to play on while we can't hang out in person. And the last time we played Minecraft, bees were not a thing. That was so long ago. And bees are a thing now. And I am so stoked. Like, I haven't had a chance to dive in and like really cultivate my apiary yet but trust me it's gonna happen i am i am so so down for bees yeah you can see there's no bleeding it's wrinkled but i don't mind the paper being wrinkled personally what i mind is if there's like you, you know what I, you know what i mean if you do watercolor in your journal where it's like bleeding through a little bit because the paint is going to need a little bit of time to dry, I went ahead and did all of the watercolor first before going in with any uh, pens or anything to do the rest of the setup. So it's a little bit out of order, but it's paint. It needs to dry. And I don't have any sort of like heat gun or something to make it dry. I Let's see. Did I have anything else that I wanted to talk about? I guess I'll just say that I am actually finding I am loving participating in the Owls Readathon. I've said this several times and you can go and check out my Owls TBR and Owls Bullet Journal setups if you are interested. I've never participated in a readathon before. I've never tried something like that. And I've found it so motivating and so helpful. And just I'm I'm reading a lot partly because of social distancing partly because I'm just in that mood and I've, I've worked up the, the motivation and the momentum to be reading a lot, which feels great. And having this sort of like 
structure. The structure of a readathon has been really fun and I'm actually looking at participating in a different readathon in May. So stay tuned for another TBR video about that closer to that time. I might do a bullet journal spread for that. I'm not totally sure. We'll see. I actually have a lot of pages left in this journal to the point where I think I can get like seven, maybe even eight months in here. I don't know. I think that's, that's pushing it for me, but the layout that I decided to go with for May is more of a dashboard uh, look where I've got a whole lot of stuff crammed in everywhere and it's 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 the kind of look that I wanted to go for it's it feels right right now <laughs> um I am trying something new with my calendar yet again always got to try something new I guess that's just who I am now I am gonna be doing color coding because with the new schedule that my spouse and I have with stay-at-home orders we have a lot going on actually and a lot of it is very uh, routine at this point um, my spouse has freelance work that he does and he's got these like regular scheduled things and I uh, work remotely as well and we've got a lot of like virtual D&D games so I wanted to try out the idea of color coding all of the things that I know are going to be happening, like this thing happens every Thursday, this thing happens every Monday, etc. And then having a smaller space to record any additional sort of random things that get scheduled. Fun story, I did not actually plan to do this like little hashed line font for the monthly header. And I just did that very impromptu and I love the way that it turned out. It's so cute, but um, that was not planned at all. I just did that spur of the moment. On the right side of the spread here, adding in a space for my goals and starting to draw in some of the hexagons for the honeycomb. I started this a little bit too early. It did bleed through a tiny bit, not enough to bother me, but patience might have served me well. And I guess the other thing I wanted to mention, I wanted sort of a warmer, softer look. So I used a brown, Tombow Twin Tone uh, instead of like a Micron or something in black and I oh I love it I absolutely love it it's so warm I'm just really loving browns I've always loved brown let's be honest brown and yellow are just lovely colors I think the most intimidating aspect of this theme the thing that has kept me from attempting a honey slash bees theme before is the bees themselves. I am not terribly confident in my drawing capabilities. I was really nervous about it. It was the last thing that I sketched out when I was drafting this setup, but I have to tell you, I am so happy with my little bees that I drew. They are exactly the style that I wanted to create. They are so cute. They're really easy. I was so scared of drawing these and they're actually really, really easy. It's it's just a lot of very sketchy lines and making them nice and, and round. I don't really like the wings, but I don't, I don't care about that. Just adding in a second little bee friend up at the top of the page and I wanted to do a close up here just so you could see. So if you, like me, are very intimidated by drawing something like this, you can see it's not terribly hard. It's, it's actually not. It's intimidating. I get it. I'm with you. But if I can do it, you can. And the last thing that I wanted to include on my sort of dashboard calendar layout was my habit tracker. I have not been the best at keeping up with my habits. You know, we're being gentle with ourselves in this time of stress. So I'm, I'm adjusting the habits a little bit. I'm going to keep trying at them. I think I'm only doing, what, six habits. Um, I don't remember what I did last month. There might have been nine. I don't know. It was two. 
but I'm gonna keep on trying, keep on doing my best. I am finding that even if I'm not being as successful with the habits as I might like to, it's still a helpful thing to keep me on track and keep me motivated and keep me going into my bullet journal and um, sticking with the goals that I've set for myself. And moving on to the next spread, naturally, it's a honeybee theme, gotta do a honeycomb for the mood tracker. And I went ahead and did just a full page of uh, honeycomb hexagons, I guess, so that I could maintain my gratitude log. I'm still trying. It's really a struggle for me, but I think I'm beginning to get into a routine with it which feels pretty good and I'm going to I'm going to continue to try. I think it's a very for me especially it's a very healthy beneficial practice to do gratitude logging and it's something that I have thought about a lot. I've tried it before unsuccessfully and I've actually I've, I've been encouraged to do it by my therapist so a little extra motivation there. Um, but I'm going to fill in like little statements of gratitude on the right side of the spread and on the left side of the spread is where I will fill in each uh, hexagon with a, mood, a color for my mood. And then if I have anything to say, like a daily log type of deal, I figure I can just write that in on the mood tracking side of the spread. I haven't really felt a huge need to do that daily logging. Like it's helpful, but it has not been recently as helpful as it has been. And at the time that I filmed this, I hadn't even picked the colors that I was going to use for my mood tracker. I picked them now. I'm all, I'm all set and ready for May, but uh, yeah, just not everything is, is always perfectly prepared when people go in to film their bullet journal setups. And the last couple of pages here, I decided to do something fun and create a spring quarantine bucket list where I can brainstorm some ideas of fun springtime activities that I can do for myself and with my kid and my family while we're uh, social distancing and isolating. I, I have no idea what I'm going to put here. I'm probably going to have to do some research on what options are available and what options are specifically available in my area, but I wanted to be intentional about doing something fun, doing something for the season, and yeah, just, just taking that time to, to, to do something, you know? Yeah, we, we need to be taking care of each other and ourselves at this particular moment in time. It's important. It's a lot going on in the world right now. I know everybody is saying that and everybody's talking about it and it it wears, but it's it's a very interesting time in history. And we'll just, we'll see. We'll see what this becomes. Anyway, that's enough of that. Just doing a tiny bit of collaging down at the bottom of the page. I've got these nice flower stickers that I wanted to use. They're sort of, they're like the washi stickers, so they're pretty transparent, which is nice. And after I filmed this, I did end up going back in with a quote. Um, they're actually lyrics from an Epic High song that I like a lot. Um, I will, I'll go ahead and link to the song in the description. It doesn't have anything to do with bees or honey or spring, but I've always found it to be a very motivational song and yellow is a thing of motivation for me so i don't know it felt appropriate and it's my bullet journal so that's that's what matters right and on this last page of my may setup i wanted to do just a wash of watercolor to give myself a place for memory keeping for my kid and i wanted to try this this thing that i've seen other people do i think this would have worked better with markers. Basically, you, you apply the color to a plastic sheet and then you add some water and you smoosh it down on the paper and it creates this really neat effect. I don't think it worked too well with straight 
watercolors. I think what I've seen people do is draw on a plastic bag or sheet of plastic with a marker and then spray it with water and then smoosh it down and that looks pretty cool. But it gave me it gave me a starting point and then I just added in, as you can see, some additional watercolor. The colors that I used, by the way, are, I don't know what the top yellow is called, but the bottom one that's a little bit darker and richer and more golden is yellow ochre. Just, you know, in case anyone wanted to know that. <laughs> And that is all of the pages that I have set up for May. I didn't go do a weekly setup. I did want to show you the utter chaos that ensues when I film a bullet journal setup. <laughs> so enjoy that. And here is the final flip through of my setup for May. I hope that you have enjoyed this. Uh, let me know down in the comments what your favorite color is. Like I said, I love yellow. It's so bright happy and motivating, but I would love to hear what other people enjoy, what, what helps motivate you, and um, what, what joys are you surrounding yourself with in this unusual time that we are in. I hope that you are well, that you are safe. Um, yeah, that's, that's really all there is to it. I hope you're well. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.